So let's talk about transforming post blocks from looking this generic to something much more like this or within Elementor for free. Now I think it's safe to assume we all know where this post blocks go into since they can be used in several instances. However, for this video, let's assume this was at the bottom of our site content, just directly above the site footer. Alright, getting started, I've gone ahead to add three dummy blog posts representing three of these on our design reference. And naturally, they've all got a title, little description for demonstration purpose, and lastly, a featured image. Now, speaking of what we need to achieve this look, first you need to install Elementor Page Builder and the plugin called Geg Elementor Kit. And once you've got this two installed, I think it should be second nature for every web designer to disable widgets that are not particularly in use for a project at any given time. So let's hover over this to select element and disable all except post blocks. And lastly, let's scroll down to save changes. At this point, we've got all we need. So let's hop onto Elementor page editor to get started. Now I've gone ahead to remove the site header and footer as well as adding a container with a mean height of 200 pixels to the top of this page since we've got no content on here to fill up the space. Let's add in a new structure and pretty much everything I'll leave to default aside maybe just define and aligning our content to the center. Head back to the widgets panel to search and add the post block element into this container. And at first glance you can see this comes nothing close to what we have here. And that's because we've got five block styles which are very much welcome to give it a try. But for this video we'll be using the third. And we also can't leave this image looking that point quality so let's change its size to full and then set its column to three. And underneath this, we've got the option to choose from what we want display to those we don't. So we want the category to which this post belongs to display here. We also want the post accept with its length set to 20. So this practically controls the number of words you want the post description to say before it cuts it off with an ellipsis, which you also have control over. We definitely want the read more button displayed here with its icon set to arrow upright line and this this gives us control over the read more text now because i don't want this section looking all crowded i'll just get rid of the option that ain't particularly useful to a user so that would be the comment icon as well as the post meta and lastly before we begin styling this we've got two additional tabs to take a look at one controlling the block settings and the other each pagination we won't be talking about the block pagination since I'd rather just add a read more call to action link or button to all the block content around this section rather than having paginations or navigations here. Now speaking of the settings tab, while it has quite a number of options to explore, its ultimate goal is control over the post you want displayed here, starting with including or excluding certain post IDs. Or you might as well just type that in here to take a peek. And these other settings apply the same idea as we just learned. And lastly, this helps us sort out our post by the latest or oldest post among other options. So that's pretty much it for this section. Now let's move on to styling this. And since the container tab isn't particularly useful in this case, I'll just skip past that to open up the post item. Now the first thing we want to do in here is to reduce the spacing between our columns. So I'm just going to make this 30. And when we head back to our design reference, we can see we've got borders around our post blocks. So heading back to our design canvas, I'm just going to change the border type to solid and set its width to two pixels. Next up, we want to define the border color. So I'm just going to click on this and enter in hashtag triple one C's. And because we're going to be using this particular color hex code for the most part, I'm just going to move on to save this as a global color. So select this and I'm just going to put in the color hex code we added in there. And that simply creates a new color hex code we can work with. So that's pretty much all we need to do for the post item. Maybe aside getting rid of the border radius, which is already set to zero pixels by default. So let's move on to the thumbnail tab. Now, when we head back to our design reference, we can see we've got a little bit of padding around our thumbnails. So heading back to our design canvas, let's get that done. So I'm just going to add in five pixels. And that's pretty much all we need to do for the thumbnail tab. But of course, you can feel free to customize other settings however we use see fit. So let's move on to the next tab. And pretty much all we need to do in here is to resize the height of our images. Currently, we have this set to 300 pixels, and I think that's an ideal number. But of course, if you wanted to increase the height of these images, and let's say we added 500 pixels in here, this is pretty much how it's going to look. But we are going with 300, so I'm just going to leave that as is. So let's move on to the next item, which is the content container. And what this gives us control over is the content we've gotten here. 
Now we really don't have much to do in here aside maybe adding a little bit of padding to our content just to make this more aligned to our thumbnail. So if we take a look at our design reference, we can see we've got a little bit of padding set to the top. We've got padding set to the left. We've got to the right and a little to the bottom. So heading back to our design canvas, I'm just going to add in 25 pixels around and we can see we've got so much space into the top. We need to get rid of that. So I'm just going to unlink all values here and make this zero pixels. And I think that's very much ideal in this case. But of course, if you wanted to reduce the padding you've got to the left and right, that's totally your choice. We already have this aligned to the left, so I'm just going to leave that as is. But if we align this to the center, this is pretty much what you get. And that's pretty much it for the content container. So I'm just going to close that. And the next item we've got is the category. And that practically controls this item we've got here. So we can start out by positioning this to the left, just as we have on our design reference. And we're going to be making further customizations to this in a second. So heading back to our design canvas, the next option we've got here will be its typography. So let's click on this and for its font family, we'll be going with Roboto. So I'm just going to search for Roboto. Its font size set to 14 pixels and its width set to 600. So that's pretty much all we need to do for its typography. And just because we saved our color hex code earlier, let's click on this and choose hashtag 311Cs. Next up, we've got the option to change the background color of this category section, just as we have on our design reference. So heading back to our design canvas, for its background type, I'm going to select classic. And for its color, let's change this to hashtag FFBA00. Next up, let's add precise padding to our category section. And currently, we can see we've got padding set to the left, right, and to the top. Not so much the bottom. So to do this, let's unlink all values here. And I'm just going to change the top and bottom part into 12 pixels. And for its right and left, let's make this 20 pixels. Now, when we head back to our design reference, we can see this isn't touching the bottom of our thumbnail, just as we have here currently. Now, to achieve this, we need to add patterns to the left and bottom. So heading back to our design canvas, I'm just going to unlink all values here. And for its bottom, let's make this 20. And to the left, let's make this 20. Next up, we've got a little bit of padding set to our categories. So let's head back and let's change the body type to solid. Its width set to two pixels around. And for its color, we're going with the same as we did earlier. So hashtag triple one says. And the last thing we want to do for its category is add a hard shadow to it. So I'm just going to click on the box shadow. And for its color, just as we did earlier, hashtag triple one says. Horizontally, I would make this three. Vertically, I'll make this three. And for its blow value, I'm going to make that zero. And that gives us the hard shadow we want. And that's all we need to do for its category. So let's move on to the next tab, the post title. So practically all we need to do is make adjustment to its typography. So I'm just going to click on this. And for its font family, we'll be going with Moolish. So let's search for that and click on that. And for its size, let's make this 22 and its weight set to 800. Okay. And lastly, for its line height, let's make this 30 pixels. So coming out of that, the next thing we need to do is make adjustment to its color. So let's scroll down and select hashtag triple one C's. Now the next item we've got on our list will be the post except. So let's select that. And just as we did for its title, all we need to do in here as well is make customizations to its typography. So let's click on this. And its font family set to Moolish, font size 16 pixels, its weight set to 400. And lastly, its line height, let's make this 30 pixels. And that's it. So let's move on to change its color. So let's select this and go with hashtag 311C. And the next item we've got on our list will be the read more button. So let's open that up. And I'm just going to scroll down this page. Now, starting out with its typography, let's click on this and font family, Moolish. Font size 16 pixels and its weight set to 700. The next option we've got will be its padding. We'll be coming to that in a second, so I'm just going to skip past that as well as its margin. The next item we've got here will be the icon spacing. And we want to add in a little bit of spacing to this, so I'm just going to make that 10 and the icon size set to 15%. Now, heading back to our design reference, we can see we've got no background color set to this read more button, and we've also got a border set to its button. That's not a decoration because normally if you want to do that, you can just click on this 
and its decoration we can set this to we can set this to on the line but that's not the case in here so i'm just going to change this to default or set that to none and let's move on to its background color so for the background type i'm going to click on classic and select this to make this transparent and while we made the background color transparent we also rendered the text color invincible and that's because by default it was set to white so for the text color let's click on this and i'm just going to search for hashtag 311c so select that and we should have our text back now earlier i mentioned the decoration we've got underneath the read more button so we can achieve that using bodies let's scroll down and for its body type i'm just going to change that to solid its color let's click on this and i'm just going to search for hashtag 311c and this is pretty much what we get right now but for us to get rid of this border we've got around our button and have it only set to the bottom, we can just unlink all values here and that's going to get rid of that. And for its bottom, let's make this two. But if we take a closer look at this, we can see we've still got border radius set to the left and right. And to get rid of that, we can just come over to the border radius option and make that zero. Now, if we take a closer look at this, we can see this isn't properly aligned to the beginning of this border. And for us to actually achieve that, that is where this pattern comes in handy. So I'm just going to unlink all values here and we can see we've got that aligned properly to the start. But we want to add in a little bit of padding just to add in a little bit of space in between our text and the border. So I'm just going to make this 10 and that's pretty much it. These other options we've got here, which is the preload, meta button, no content and CSS box. They are not so much important in the context of this video. So let's move on to the next thing. But just before we do that, let's update this. And lastly, taking a look at the tablet and mobile responsiveness, we see this works just fine. I might just require a slight adjustment. Like on tablet, we could make the column two instead of one and probably reduce the font sizes here a little. And the same applies on mobile. And you can move on to reduce its title and accept font sizes. So that's pretty much it. Let me know what you think about this in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more and I'll see you in the next one.